I come to you this morning. Lord, it's not about the sermon that you have me to minister. It's, it's not about me. It's not about anything that I want to do, God. But I just ask you this morning, God, that you would speak through me. That you would articulate the words. That you would break it down. So that the youngest one here can understand. God, I don't know where these people are at. I don't know who's lying about being a Christian. I don't know who's putting on a facade. I don't know who's faking it. I don't know who has their church clothes on. But I know that your presence is in this place. And you know our hearts. You know where we all stand with you, God. I don't know where they're at, God. And I just ask you that this morning, that you would speak to their hearts, God. That you would speak to the spirit man that lies within them, God. That it would not just stay in their minds, and not even in their hearts, but that the spirit would hear what the Lord has to say. God, that we would for ourselves just go to You. That we would just come into Your presence, God. That's the purpose of Christ. That's the purpose of the gift that You bestowed upon us through Your Son. That we have access to You again. That we don't have to depend on Pastor Ray, but that we can come to you. And that you can speak to us. And that we can hear you and we can understand your voice. God, I don't discredit pastors, apostles, teachers, prophets, and evangelists. I don't discredit those that worked in ministry, but it's about you, God. It's not about the offices. It's not about the titles. It's about you. It's about talking with you, Abba, Father, Daddy. In the midst of what we don't understand, in the midst of wanting answers and, and trying to put the pieces together, you have those answers. You have the way to put the pieces in the puzzle. But we have to come to you. It has to be about a relationship with you, God. God, let us understand. Like that song, Did Mary know that when she kissed your son, she was literally kissing you. That she was, when she was tending to him and bathing him and changing him, that she was doing it to you. That when she did it to the least of them, she did it to you. God, let us understand. That it is all about you. That it's not about self. It's not about my wife. It's not about my children. But it's about a relationship with you, God. Understanding who you are in me. And me getting an understanding who I am in you. God, let us come to that place of surrendering today. And understanding the gift that you have given us. Not from a religious mindset, a traditional mindset, or how we were taught, but how you say it. How you express this 
such an extravagant gift. A gift that nobody could ever give for us. That gift that not money can buy, not that a man can make, but that you, God, gave to us when we didn't even deserve it. God, that even when we mess up, the gift is still there. Let us not abuse the gift by continuing in the same mess ups. But let us embrace that gift for real. Not just as a savior from hell, but as a Lord over our life. Because making Him Lord gives us a relationship with you. That you would come and embrace us. That you would come and enter into us. Let us understand that gift, God. Let us not just play with the gift for a little while and then trash it. Let us not continue to make this resolution and then fall away from you. But today, God, that as your presence is here and we're coming to you, that you would speak so that lives would be changed in this place. Not because of me, but because of the you that is in me. That we would understand that you're the reason for every season. Not just this one, but every season. Christ is the reason for it. That there would not be seasons if it wasn't for you, oh God. There wouldn't be a ground for us to walk on if it wasn't for you. We wouldn't have the very next breath if it wasn't because of you. Let us get to a place of appreciating what you do give us, God. Not what we want, but what you give us. Let today and every day from this day forward be about you, God. Be about Christ. And be about the Holy Ghost. All three wrapped up in the one and living inside of us. In Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Amen. And amen. You know, I don't know where everybody's at here. I, I really don't know. I, I don't know if you're if you're lying about your relationship with God. I don't know that. I don't know if you got your church clothes on because today is Sunday. And you think that's what you're supposed to wear. I don't know if you're truly spending time with God one-on-one. -on -one. But that's the sole reason why Jesus came. He didn't come so you can just be someone that didn't go to hell. That's just Savior. But He wants to be the Lord over your life. He wants a relationship. He wants to talk with you. He wants to visit with you. He wants to spend time with you. But is this the only time that we give Him? 
Or do we just give them a five minute devotional that we read on you version? Is that really a relationship? For those of you that are married, what if you gave your husband or your wife that much time? How would that relationship really work out? I know that wouldn't work for me and Pastor Rochelle because I need her time. Whether she wants me around or not, she's got me. I'm going to spend time with her. I'm going to seek her out. When she's not around, I long for her presence. When I have to drop her off at work, I'm like, oh. But you know what? That doesn't count when I compare it to how I want to be with God. That I want to long for His presence. I want to be with Him. I want... I don't want to get too busy in building this that I forget the one who gave it to me. I don't want to be too busy building a relationship with my wife that I forget that it was God who gave me my wife. That we don't get so busy in the creations and the things that we forget who's the one that created it. And today, and all week long, God kept talking to me about the most important gift of all. And as you see these gifts wrapped up here, they're real nice and pretty. And... But there was a gift that was born to a virgin. There was a gift that was born in a manger where cows and all kind of animals live and, and poop and eat and do all that stuff. There was a king that was born for each and every one of us. And I'm going to tell you, if you came today to listen to a traditional message, <laughs> you came to the wrong place. Because God is telling us that we have to understand the gift that He gave us. And if Adam would have done what he was told to do, this gift would have never had to come. So if you have your Bibles, if you would turn to 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10 thank you Minister Crystal each of you received a spiritual gift God has shown you His grace in giving you different gifts and you are like servants who are responsible for using God's gifts. So, be a good servant and use your gifts to serve each other. He doesn't say, be a good pastor, be a good apostle. He says, be a good servant. He doesn't even say, Sister Raquel, be a great servant. He said, just be a good servant. One that does what God asks him to do. Anybody have a phone? I need a phone real quick. I got it. Praise the Lord. We take this phone, and I shut it down to you. Um, you take this phone. And it's a good gift. It's an iPhone. It's a 6 Plus to be exact. A real good phone. This is an iPhone 10. No, I'm just joking. But it's a good phone. And a phone, the way we know it, or the older people know it, 
A phone is just to do what? Just to make calls. It's a good gift. It's a really, really good gift to have a phone. But this phone, you can go to your Bible. You can text. You can check your emails. So there's more gifts wrapped up in this one gift. And that's what he's talking about here. We've all received a gift. But in that gift, there's more gifts that we can use. Thank you, sir. But it's up to you. Pastor Rochelle, she has an iPhone. And all she likes to do is text and call. But that phone has a lot more that it can do. And we need to understand that there's so much that God wants us to do. And we have a right to do it. He's given us the gifts to do it. When you received Christ, you received so much more than just Christ. You receive the fullness of God. That means everything that God can do, we can do. That's why He says, and I've said it time and time again, watch your words. Because of the creation that happens when you speak, how the atmosphere changes by your words, by what you say, when you're putting somebody down. When you're raising somebody, that's a gift to be able to speak things into existence. We can't just get stuck on, okay, I have the gift of Christ. There's so much more. There's the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It says that there's power that comes with it. You're wondering why you're walking and you're weak? Have you tapped in to the gift of power? There's so much more gifts. And God is requiring us to use the gifts. And He says, be a good servant and use them with each other. So many times, I get phone calls. Hey, Pastor, can you? I need you to pray for Brother Bruce. And I'm like, okay. Or I get a text. I need you to pray. And I'm good about praying. But here's my question if you send me that text or you call me, why don't you pray for them? Because the same authority that I've been given, you've been given. The same power that I have, you should have. And I understand, well, you're the pastor. Well, guess what? You're the minister of the gospel. You don't have to depend on me. You should have this dialogue with God to be able to pass out what He gives you. You shouldn't wait to see. Well, let me see. What is? What would Ray say right now? No, what is God saying right now? Say what God says. Because you might not like what I have to say. And you might not like what God has to say too. Because we just want the blessings of God. We want the gifts. But we don't realize that as you grow... There's more accountability that comes with that gift. There's more that you're held accountable to. And some of you, oh, okay, then I'll just stay where I'm at. <coughs> then stay where you're at. That's on you. But that's not what God wants. God has so much more. Why would we be people, children that just settle? You know, when Pastor Karina would... And I, every time I talk about Pastor Karina and I remember her being little, it just chokes me up because she's all grown and married and living with her husband, praise the Lord. 
and I don't have to buy that Mustang 17. <laughs> That's his job. <laughs> but I remember when she was a little girl and she was saying it. I'd be watching football and, or baseball and she would. She would run to me and just come up with some of out of this world questions. And I'd have to pray in the spirit to get an answer. I mean, she was the one that taught me how to pray. So I could give her answers. And I remember one time, when, back in the day when I used to like to go hunting. <laughs> she said to me, she said, I want you to take me hunting with you. I want to go. And she wanted to camouflage clothes. And she wanted all this stuff. And she said, I want to go with you. And I said, baby, if we go, you got to be quiet. I can be quiet, puppy. <laughs> I promise you, I can be quiet. I said, okay, if you can sit here and be quiet for two minutes, can I tell you two minutes? Then I'll take you with me. And she said, I can do it. I'm like, good. She sat there in, I think, less than 30 seconds. So what do I do now? I said, see, that's why I can't take you. And she was like, finally, the light bulb came on and she understood. And that's what God wants. For you to come to Him. And you may, you may talk ahead of time. But God, His grace and His mercy, and He'll tell you, Hey, Sister Maria, I didn't, I didn't tell you to talk yet. And all you have to say, okay, Abba, my bad. And be quiet. But we got to be willing to come before Him. Stop thinking that you're not worthy. Because here's the reality. Wake up, Paul. You're really not worthy. You really deserve hell. Oh, did he say that in church? Yes. Because there's heaven and hell. There's no in between. So don't get offended because I said hell. But He wants you to come and talk to Him and dialogue. And that, that's the, the greatest gift that was given to us. The opportunity to talk to Abba Father. To conversate with Him. To listen to Him. And don't know... Well, I have this problem, I have that problem, and I need you to fix my husband, and I need you to straighten out my boss. No! Just talk to Daddy. I don't know how, how you guys, but there's times I talk to God, and I said, so how you doing today, bro? I mean, I don't need to come with do's and thou's, because he gonna, he's going to be, dude, you're hood. What are you talking about? Don't talk to me like that. And I know some of you are probably, he's crazy. Yeah, yes, I'm crazy. I'm crazy about my relationship with God. I'm crazy to, to even fathom that this God who created everything, who put everything together, who pieced me, every organ, every, every artery, everything together in such a way that I represent Him. This God that did all this is willing to live inside of me. I, I don't know if y'all think like that. I do. And I'm getting more and more crazy thinking this way. And not that I'm y'all gonna take me to tell a Pharaoh. And if y'all do, everybody's there gonna be healed. Because I understand the power and authority I have to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Woo! So you can't lock up the kingdom. Guys, you have that opportunity because the gift has been presented to you. Today, you're getting a gift that there's a child that was born, died, suffered, went to hell, came back up, lives at the right hand of God, talking about you and me. Because we matter to God. And we have an opportunity to talk to Him. God offers us an awesome gift. But some are not willing 
or make excuses to give up their issues. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 18 through 27, and y'all don't have to turn there. It talks about a story about a rich man. And this rich young ruler wanted to know, hey, how do I get what you're talking about? And Jesus gave him the specifics. In our terms, okay, don't curse. Don't go to clubs. Don't listen to secular music. You know, what we would say these days. Okay? And the guy said, I do all that. I, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I, I, I don't do all of that stuff. And Jesus said, add a boy. Good deal. He said, then give up everything you got and follow me. And right there he said, whoa. You don't understand all that I have. And he walked away. And Jesus then said that it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God. So the disciples freaked out then who in the world can get to heaven? Because apparently us doing all this doing is not going to get us there. And you're asking me to give up everything that you've given me to walk with you. So, I don't know. I, I don't know if I should follow this dude anymore. But in the next chapter, in chapter 19, verses 1 through 9, it talks about a little dude, Zacchaeus, who was rich. I mean, he was loaded just like this rich young ruler. And he wanted to see Jesus. He knew that Jesus was coming to town. Not Santa Claus. But Jesus was coming to town. He was so little that he couldn't even push his way through the crowd. So what he did, and I, that's why I think Zacchaeus had a little Spanish in him. Because he climbed this tree. And he got up in the tree and he wanted to see Jesus. And Jesus told him, hey little dude, check this out. I'm coming to your crib today. I'm going to hang out with you. And everybody was freaking out. But he told Zacchaeus the same thing. And Zacchaeus was willing to give up everything for this one gift. For this one gift. This gift of Christ mattered more to him than every other stuff that he had. Because he understood that if I give up this, I'll get so much more. So much more gifts. I don't only get the Christ, but I get everything that comes with Him. I get all the applications, all the apps that come with God, I'm able to get. How many of us are thinking from that mindset? How many in our spirit are saying, I just don't want the Savior of Christ that I now don't go to hell, but I want everything else that comes with it. I want to use everything else that came from this place where I accepted Him as a Savior, but I also want to make Him Lord. I want the whole measure of this gift that was promised to me. Not just getting out of hell, but everything that comes along with it. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. I read this the other day. I think it was last night. And it just, it just jumped out. I've read this scripture before, or these, these five verses, 
I've read them before, but because I'm starting to get a, a revelation, not just understanding, not just what somebody else has preached, but I'm getting revelation from my time with God that this became so profound. For this reason, grasping the greatness of this plan by which Jews and Gentiles are joined together in Christ. They're no longer separated. They're joined together. I bow my knees in reverence before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15. For whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. God, the first and ultimate Father. May He grant you out of the riches of His glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through His Spirit in your inner self, indwelling your innermost being and personality. Right there, guys, is everything that I've been saying. We should walk with the gift of strength, energy, power because of the Spirit of God that is in us. But see, you're not going to understand these gifts if you're not talking with Daddy. Just like Pastor Karina couldn't understand a lot of stuff, but as we talked, she got understanding and she got revelation. And there's many of you that all of a sudden here lately light bulbs are coming on you're starting to light up in here like a christmas tree because all of a sudden in the midst of our conversations you're like oh yeah and you're repeating stuff and you're saying stuff out of revelation that god has given you that we've been talking about the leaders are doing it through emails that I said now, I'm hearing through those emails what God is speaking to them. This week I spent time with Sister Beverly and Sister Vanessa and just in our conversations, I was like, wow, they got it. They're getting it. Because if, if I could just take a selfie right now of how some of you are looking at me, You'll be like, oh, now I understand what he's talking about. Because your face is, dude, where's this guy coming from? I, I'm not I, You butt out of breath. Just sit down, relax. This is an awesome thing to get understanding. He says in all things, get understanding. Get revelation. And I know this is stuff that maybe some of you may not understand. But keep seeking God. Keep talking to God. Keep asking God, break this down for me. Help me to understand what Ray is saying. Above my head. And I'm not saying that you're dumb. But we're all at different levels. And I may have not spent as much time as you do with God. Praise the Lord. I'm okay with that. I'm not offended because you spent two hours with God. It doesn't bother me. I want you to spend more time than I do. <coughs> Verse 17. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. Not just in your mind. Not just in what you see out here. But in your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if God's not there, if that's not a resting place, you'll speak what the world would speak. In your toughest times, you'll talk negative. And I'm not just saying that you'll go and curse. But I'm just saying... You'll speak stuff that doesn't glorify God, that doesn't edify Him, that when the challenges come, 
And you start to see, well, how am I going to pay this bill? Well, God, you said. And you begin to speak into the atmosphere and into your bills and into your husband and into your wife and into your children. What God speaks instead of what's in your mind. But you understand that it's not what I think, but it's what God is dialoguing to me, what He's pouring down into me that i got to say over this situation. But we're so quick to react by saying what we think. That's why the Bible talks that our mind must be renewed to the mind of Christ. Because in every situation, He didn't speak what He wanted to. He said, I do as my Father does. That means He speaks what Daddy speaks. I hope this is helping somebody. Amen. Having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love. What love? The love of God. Not the love of my wife. Not the love of my children. Not the love of the impact center. But the love of God. To be rooted. Embedded. Deep. Down. That when life comes out of it. It is the life of God. It is the breath of God that's coming through the root system that now manifests His tree and His presence and you can eat of the tree of life, which is Christ. That's what this gift is all about. <laughs> Being fully capable of comprehending with all saints, God's people, the width and the length and the height and the depth of His love, fully experiencing that amazing, endless love. The depth, the height, the length, the width, all that stuff. To be able to understand the very essence of God. That all comes out of a relationship. Out of us embracing the full gift, the full measure of Christ. Not just the outerness of the gift, but to go in and see what God has provided for you. Not just the pretty bag, but to go deeper in this gift and the gifts that come with that gift. And that you may come to know practically. That means simple. Don't, don't complicate this, guys. It's simple. It's practical. Children can understand this. That's why he said, we must be his children. And I'm not... He's not saying that you got to be like a little snot-nosed kid. But you know what? Sometimes I'd rather have a snot-nosed kid than oh, some of the adults. Because they're so receptive. That's why kids don't bother me. They don't. When I see and they come up to me and they hug me, I think about Daddy. And how he wants the same relationship with us. That we would just run to him. Like Elijah ran to me this morning. And he has this thing where he squeezes your hand. And it's the hope grip. That's what daddy wants. Just come and grab his hand. Daniel, he, he sees me and I say hope. And he goes smash. Daddy wants to play with you like that. But you can't have that time of playing with daddy if you don't spend time with daddy. You can't expect daddy to always pour out his grace and mercy and you don't give him something back. And I know people, they, they talk about mercy and grace and mercy and I understand that. But what gives us the right to abuse it? What gives us that right? 
Because here's the reality. If you have that relationship with daddy, you know that mercy and grace is there and you won't abuse it. It's no different. I don't need this ring to tell me I'm married. I know that I'm married. Hello. I don't need this ring to stop me from committing adultery because I'm a married man. I don't need grace and mercy to have a relationship with God. I thank God for His grace and mercy. And I know that's, that might rock some of you and you want to call me and you want to email me and text me. That's fine. Come see me. Make sure you schedule an appointment with Crystal. Because there's going to be many of you. But the grace and mercy, that's great. But I want God. I want to be able to talk with Him and look at Him. Feel His breath and look into His eyes. Hear His heartbeat. We need to understand that, that that's available. Why would we just settle for the Savior when there's more to it? The love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. <laughs> Man, I like that. You can have all knowledge, but if you don't have experience of that knowledge, <laughs> Pastor Karina, that's all you got. It's something about experience. When you experience the embrace of God, you won't, <laughs> you won't want to sin. You won't, you won't want to go back to what you used to do. You just won't. You won't desire those other things because you've just had an experience with the Creator of everything that is seen and unseen. So why would you want to settle for less? <coughs> why, just, <laughs> why just settle for Savior when you can have all this experience? <laughs> Ooh. Why would you settle for just I do when you can have more than that? That was good. That was good. I just don't want Pastor Rochelle's I do. I want everything that comes with the I do. The cooking. And I'll leave the rest there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Y'all don't try to act all sanctified and holy. <laughs> I like that, Crystal. There's more to it. But I'll leave it alone. That you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God. So that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your life. Completely filled and flooded with God Himself. Flooded, that means it runs over. That means it's got to land on somebody. It just doesn't go to waste, y'all. Filled over. Oh, man. Just what I'm feeling right now about being filled over. It's something about when you know that you know that you know that you don't deserve to be filled over. That you don't deserve to be flooded with the presence of God. <laughs> but because you go beyond a Savior into Lordship, it just, I don't know, I can't even, <laughs> even explain the feeling <coughs> of just His presence. <coughs>
Everybody just stand to your feet. Forgive us when we don't appreciate your presence, oh God. Forgive us when we don't appreciate the gifts that you've given us, oh God. Oh God, I'm just so wrecked in your presence. God, let your children that are here just come to that place of entering, entering with you, God. God, that they would just <laughs> get to that place of intimacy, God. Oh, God, don't let me fail you. <sighs> I said it earlier, guys. I don't know where you're at in your relationship with God. I don't even know if some of you have a relationship. I really don't. But you know what? God has given you this gift. And it is Christ. And the greatest gift that came from Christ is the relationship that you're able to have from God. And if you know if you know you don't have that right relationship with God, you need to get out of your seat and just, just come into His presence. And I know that you, you're thinking, well, His presence is in this room. You're right. But there's something about when you step out by faith and you demonstrate that you don't care what people say because the Bible says, if you're ashamed of me before man, I'm going to be ashamed of you before daddy. So if you know you're not in that right commune with him, if you're not at that place of being able to hear God and talk with God, and you hear his voice, and you feel the tugging, then you know you need to come. 